people to begin to want to fellowship more. We pray, Lord God, for people to not be jealous and mean and envious of others in this community, God. We pray that people will be encouraged and strengthen one another. We pray, God, that we can join together hands in unity and walk in love, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for an outpouring of love. We pray for a transference of wealth in this community, God. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that hearts will not be hard, Lord God. We pray for favor in this community. We pray that you cause us to be a city set on the hill that shall not be in. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for your strength and glory, your grace, your might, your wisdom, wisdom in how to reach the nations, wisdom in how to reach your people, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that all, no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, you shall condemn. We speak life over this church, life over our family, life over our body, life over our finances. We speak life like never before, God. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you, God, that you are filling us with your joy, with the abundance of grace, with the abundance of mercy, with your wisdom, God. You are filling us with your strength, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are restoring, Lord God, hope. You are you are, you are are redeeming the times, Lord God. We thank you that as we fast and as we pray, God, that you are doing something supernatural. And we, our eyes shall see your glory. Our eyes shall see your power. Our eyes shall see your deliverance, God. For you are a deliverer. You are the great I am. You are the lily in the valley. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are our salvation. We thank you, God. The Bible says the righteous run to you and we are safe. We are safe in your presence, God. We are safe, Lord God, under your pavilion. We are safe under the under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you, God, that we are protected. We are protected, Lord God, from the enemy. You hide us in your secret place, in your secret tabernacle. You protect us, Lord God. You give us strength and grace and mercy, health and healing and favor. We thank you, God, that we just say that you're more than enough, God. We bless you, Lord. You're more than enough. You are everything we need, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are filling us with your power and your joy and your strength, God. You are making every among every need to be met, God. You are supplying every need, God. You are strengthening us like never before, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are pouring out your oil over us in this place. We pray, Lord God, for more of you in this place, God. To go deeper, to be intimately acquainted with you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you, God. We worship you, oh, Father. We thank you, God, you're so mighty and so wonderful. We bless you, Lord. We thank you that you are renewing our strength right now, God. Thank you, Lord, that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Let, Lord God, heart and hearts be brought back to you, Father. We pray that you touch the hearts of those, Lord God, that are running from their assignment, running from their calling, God. We pray that you touch their hearts, Father, and let them draw nigh unto you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Thank you that you're fulfilling every need, God. Thank you that you're fulfilling every need. Every need is made and plenty more to put in store. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for strong prophetic utterances today. As we fast and pray, Lord God, today, our word is strong utterances. We just pray today, Father. In the name of Jesus, for a strong prophetic anointing, God, for an outpouring of the prophetic, to be able to declare a thing that it is so. Let us declare and it is established. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, no difference,
Hallelujah, Jesus. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My life is not my I own. I give myself away. To you I be so alone. Can I give myself, I give myself to you.
God held nothing. With he held nothing. nothing. He just beheld us for himself. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I give myself away. And sometimes you can't get in God's presence without giving him worship. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, we bless you in this place, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, for worship. Yes. Worship. And whenever we worship God, we are coming into his presence. We're entering into his presence so that he can know that we appreciate him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We appreciate all his benefits and everything that he does for us. Yes. We just bless you on today, God. We thank you. And this is the part where we want to uh, worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. And so if you need an uh, offering envelope or something like that, just let us know. And we'll uh, we'll assist you. If you're giving online, you can give a dollar sign, prophecies, report on cash app, or through PayPal. Um, we bless God for our online audience. We pray that you will be able to focus, and you take some notes as well. <clears throat> I have a very powerful teaching today. Since this is the decade of the page, this is the decade of the mouth, I believe that God wants us to understand, um, I believe that God wants us to understand the power of our words, amen? amen. And our actions sometimes will show as words unto God. Our actions, they mean a lot, amen? amen. What we do before the Lord, it means a lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, will any man rob God? And the Bible says, how will you rob him? He says, you rob him in tithes and offerings. He says, give. If we give to him, he says that he'll bless the rest. Okay? Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 the Bible says that whenever we give God uh, our tithes, he says that he will bless the rest. He will rebuke the devourer. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse uh, 8, it says, should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me in the tithes and offerings due to me. God says whenever we do that, it's, there is a curse. But we thank God that we're blessed here that we believe in giving. Amen? Amen. We are blessed here. We believe in giving. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there may be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven, uh, of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Anybody need that kind of blessing? A running over kind of blessing? I know I do. He said he will give us a running over kind of blessing. Amen? He says, I will pour out a blessing so great you will not have room enough to take it in. He says, try it. Put me to the test. He said, your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vineyard before they are all ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations shall call you blessed, for your land will be a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So we bless God that tithing is an institution where God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to, he wants us to, protect, he wants to protect us. Amen? Amen? So we thank him that we learn about that. We, we don't do anything apart from the word. Always have a word to know why you're doing something because that's what's going to, everything will fail, the Bible says, but when we know the word, the word will keep us, amen? amen? And the Bible says God gives seed to the sower. So if you want increase, begin to sow, and amen. God will make sure that you always have seed, amen? amen. So uh, you can just, just come up and you can just, um, we're not going to work her too hard today. <laughs> just come and put your offering in there. Um, and we just speak the blessing over it. Father, we just bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. And we claim the windows of heaven blessing today over our finances. God, we thank you that uh, even those that have given first fruit, we just speak blessings over it. And it will bless the rest of the year. We believe that tithing, Lord God, it protects our, our increase. And we thank you, God, for the running over blessing. In Jesus' name, we rebuke the devourer, Lord God. When we tithe, you say the devourer is rebuked. So we rebuke the devourer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Every time we give, we want to make sure we thank God that we have jobs that we can go to and we can to be our needs can be supplied. Amen. Amen. So let's get our little song. We got a little song we like to sing. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. of the word, of words, words, W-O-R-D-S. Words are very, very powerful. And I believe that in this, this dispensation, what God is showing the body of Christ is that um, in this next decade, the more you can speak what you want to see happen, it will come to pass. Uh, the, according to the Jewish tradition, the word is pay, P-E-Y, and that represents a mouth. So the more you can speak the desire that you want to see and declare God's word, the better you will see your life be. Because the enemy try to come into our life and try to get us to speak what we're seeing. When you're having, a, when you're in a low place, he wants you to start complaining about being in a low place. When you're feeling bad, he wants you to say, oh, this hurt, oh, that hurt. When you're at work and they're overworking you, the enemy wants you to just focus on everything that you're seeing. Oh, they're doing this to me, they're doing that to me. But that is a plot of the enemy to cause us to continue to have those negative things. God wants us to change our perspective. He wants us to be, first of all, we give thanks in every situation that will change it. But beyond that, if we get out of complaining and begin to bless the Lord at all times, we will see those blessings, amen? amen? We will see the manifestation of heaven and we begin to apply heaven's language. Heaven's language is the word of God. That's why it's so important that we actually spend time studying and learning the word of God so that we can release heaven's language in our situation, amen? amen. No matter how it feels, no matter how it looks, if we release God's word, it will make all the difference. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this word today. Lord, let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, God. We thank you that you are giving us revelation, knowledge that it will flow freely, uninterrupted by any demonic uh, or satanic or fleshly force in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you are adding a blessing to those that are hearing and doing your word. In Jesus' name, I thank you that we will leave never the same. And I thank you that you will speak through my mouth and through my vocal cords, Lord God. And let it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' mighty name, let's say amen together. Ready? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're just going to jump straight into the word. I just want to teach you a little bit today. I don't want to holler and shout and jump at you. I want to teach you something. Because information, information will change the way you view things and it can change your life. Amen? amen. Um, words have energy. Words have energy. If I tell you, you ugly... You start feeling some type of way. 
If I tell you you're beautiful, you'll feel some type of way. So words are very powerful. They bring energy. If you hear the word dynamic, it sounds wonderful. If you hear danger, it brings a certain level of fear. So words have power. Whenever we say them, they bring a certain emotion. Emotions are atta attached to certain words. Um, words have the ability to help us. They have the ability to heal us. Can you imagine if you wake up next to, next to uh, your significant other and every day they're telling you that you're beautiful and they love you. You'll feel a certain type of way. But on the other side of the spectrum is that if you wake up every day, they never greet you. They never tell you they love you. You never hear anything. You will feel a to the total opposite um, from how if somebody was telling you they love you and you're beautiful every day. Words have power. So we have to be mindful in this decade, these next 10 years, what we are saying because words are very powerful. And even words that we do not say. If we um, think people don't can't read your mind. There are people who can read your mind. I can read thoughts. It is just a gift of the Holy Spirit, but it's when the Holy Spirit wants. But it's so important that you say to the people around you how you feel, but to build them. To lift them up. Because if you don't say it, they'll never know. You can really love somebody and your language is just to buy them things. Pay their bills. Do all this. But if they never hear you say it, they'll never feel it. They'll think you're just doing it out of obligation and they'll never understand um, how you feel on the inside if you never speak it. Words have power. They give life. Words can heal. They hinder. Words can actually hinder. That's why I teach all the time. If somebody says something negative to you, you snatch that out out of the realms of the spirit. If they say you can't, you never will, you won't, you got to tear that down. I speak death over those words. Those words will not manifest over my life. Because a lot of times when people say something about you, if you don't block that, it will manifest. They call it self-fulfilled prophecies. People can say something over and over and over about you, and you begin to do that because you believe it. So it's very important what we say about ourselves and that we agree with what God say about ourselves. Words have power. They bring light. Words can humiliate people and they can make people humble. Words are very, very powerful. The Bible says, um, my mouth is the pen of a ready writer. So when you think of writing, you think whenever, if you have a blank piece of paper and you put words on it, if somebody go back and read it, it's telling a story. It's taking them to a journey. And so when the Bible says that my mouth is the pen of a ready writer, whatever you're saying, it creates something. The Bible says in the beginning, God said. When God said it, that created the moon, the stars, the earth. It created the seas. It created the heavens. So because the Bible says we're created in God's image and his likeness, we have the same power to speak something forth. And when we speak it, it caused something to happen. Amen? Um, a writer, they create things with their words. So we are just like that. We always hear that we go to church, we do all this all through our lifetime, and at the end we want to see if our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's very significant that it will be called a book. Why? Because it's filled with words. Words that document what you did every day. Words that, words that document how did, you, how did you trust God? What did you believe God? It's all filled with words. And one of the most powerful books that exists the most powerful book that exists is the Bible. It's filled with words that show us who we are, show us who our God is, show us what we're made of. So words have power. God, he has an amazing master plan for us to beat down the devil. When just as sure as we, we he comes through our mother's womb, there's a plan of attack against our life. This is why people don't understand why they have so much trouble, why they're going through hell, why they're going through trouble and trials. Why? Because the enemy have a plan, and God have an amazing plan. Yes. And what the enemy is planning, if we don't speak words against what, what he's planning, God's plan will never come to fruition. His plans will never happen. We'll begin to be everything that we spoke out of our mouth. I don't have enough. I can't get by. Nobody loves me. I'm tired of being alone. And so you end up alone. You don't have enough to make ends meet. Why? Because you spoke those things over yourself because you agreed with what you were seeing. But the way we look at things as Christians is that we walk by faith. Faith means I'm blind to everything that I see here, but I believe that God is doing something better. I believe the Bible says God has an expected end for us. Because he has an expected end, that means 
that he is going to fulfill some things in us that will be great. But we have to follow him, amen? We have to follow his way of doing things. I come to, to change your belief system. Because we always were taught, you know, we come from the old people and they're always telling us, you know, saying different things. They start, they give you a little nickname, that little, that little titty. They call you little different names and these little names. They follow you everywhere that you go. And then you become that, and then you never, you never get above the label that people put on you. But I'm here to tell you that that's not what God says about us. God says that He has things in store for us that we have not even been able, we, we can't even imagine it. He said He has so many great things for us, we wouldn't even believe the plan that He has because it's so far from what people said we are capable of. It's so far from what people said we are supposed to have. God says, I have plans to prosper you. And give you an expected end. If God says that he has plans to prosper us, that means that being broke is not God's will. That means somewhere along the way, God is going to show me what I need to prosper. So if I follow him, then I'm going to gain everything that I need to prosper. I don't want to be here wounded and hurt. And I don't want to speak that I don't have enough to pay my bills. Or my children are always going through this. Or I'm always bottled down by that. Don't speak it. Speak God's word over your life. Because that's what will make all the difference. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We have to choose that a life in Christ means a life of victory. Say that. A life in Christ, a life in Christ means a life of victory. Means a life of victory. Amen. Amen. We have to become excited about what we're saying. Yes. Don't say your feelings when you're feeling low. Find out what the Bible says about your feelings. The Bible says that I can do anything. But fail. It says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So instead of me saying, oh, I can't do this, or I'm afraid, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ. That means you don't have to do it by yourself. When we say, Jesus, you're our Lord, that means I don't have to go through this by myself. That means that I have the great I am who's looking over me, and he's watching over me to make sure that where I go, nothing will harm me, that I'm protected, that I have all my needs, man. Amen? We have to understand the life that God has assigned for us. It is a good life. But whenever we speak everything we see, oh, you don't love me. You don't make me feel loved. I don't like this. We get more of it. Why? It's, an, it's a plan. It's a plan of the enemy for us to have every negative thing that's spoken. So we have to learn in this decade to make sure that we're saying what God says about us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever people people see people dying, they start getting afraid. They're like, oh, this is going on, that's going on. The Bible says, I will live and not die. I declare the works of the Lord. You don't have to get afraid of somebody. Go, oh, God called their number. All we have to do is make sure we do what God say and we declare the word of the Lord. And when he's ready, he'll take us. And as long as we're trusting in him, that means that it doesn't matter what goes on around me. The Bible says a thousand shall fall at my left, ten thousand at my right, but nothing will come near me. So when we know what God says, we don't have to move by fear. We know that if, if somebody died today or if we die, when we find our life in Christ, that when the Bible says to live uh, is Christ and to die is gain. When we move over into another realm, God promised us eternal life. That's why we go to church. That's why we die. That's why we give. That's why we do uh, organizations with the church. That's why we fellowship with the church. To learn what God's will is so that way we can do that and whenever we pass over, we went to meet the Father. It's a greater life but more than what we can see every day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God does not give us a spirit of fear. But of power, of love, and of a sound mind. This last decade, the devil, the last 10 years, just think about it for a minute. Think about the last 10 years, the things that you wanted to do from 2010. The things that you thought in your mind that you wanted to do. And the things that you, you experienced. Think about it. The devil want us to focus on all that annoying. He gave us so many annoying things. Bust us over the head. Tormented us. Blocked our dreams and our plans in many different areas. But this year, God said, I want you to, I want you to speak what you want to see happen. Amen? Amen? He says, I don't want you to be annoyed or beat down by the things of the enemy. I want you to say what you want to see happen, and I'm giving it to you. I'm a prophet. I'm telling you how we talk to God. And when we do that, when we release that, we're releasing God's mind in the earth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 737 times the word word is mentioned in the Bible. The book of Psalms had the most words in it, over 42,000 words in the book of Psalms, in the Old Testament. 
The New Testament, the book with the shortest amount of words, um, is 3 John. It has 294 words. The New Testament, the book of Luke, have over, just the book of Luke, have over 25,000 words in it. The entire Bible, from, cover, from Genesis to Revelation, it has 930,000 words in it. Over 930,000 words. It, there's a hundred and thir there's uh, thirteen hundred and sixty two chapters in the Bible and over thirty six thousand verses. The Bible is made up over thirty six thousand verses. That means that there's so many words that you can say beyond your feelings that your life can be amazing. Not because you went to college, not because you have a doctorate degree, not because you're 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 uh, you're over a Fortune five hundred company, but because you connected with God Almighty. And you started saying his words on the inside of you. I just told you it's made up over almost a million words in their Bible. There's so many things that we can say opposite of what we're seeing every day. So many things. And when we begin to say what God says, it makes all the difference. Because the first part of the Bible tells you that when God said it, it happened. So if we're in his image, if I'm, I'm just like God, if I say it, it will happen. So what I'm going to condition myself to do in this year is not say what I'm feeling. I'm going to say what God say about me. He says I'm the head and not the tail. He said I'm above only and not beneath. He said I'm favored. He said I can never fail. He said he's renewing my strength when I get weary. He said let the weak say I'm strong. He said I'm, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. The hope of glory. Anything that you need, there's a word for it. Yeah, you I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. That means if I'm going through hell, I'm not afraid because God is with me. If terror and torment come, God says he's with me. He said he hides me in a secret place. What does the word say about your situation? Because if you get the word deep down in the inside of you, your life will change. Somebody say, my life is changing. Say it again, my life is changing. One more time, my life is changing. Hallelujah, I think there's an anointing on the number three. When you start saying something over and over again, repetition, it, it brings it brings something that will renew you on the inside. Remember, words have power. Hallelujah. Words have power. And I want to give you some scriptures where it talk about words. If we use words the right way, it will literally move mountains. If you say, man, I, I just can't get ahead. Oh, my boss just stay on my nerves. They will stay on your nerves. They will ride you. They will annoy you. Whatever you say, you will have. We have to be careful what we say. If we use the words wrong, they can cause your life, entire life to go up in smoke. And if you go back and you look at the things that we say over and over again, you'll see that that's what you're living. And it's unfortunate, but I'm giving you a revelation today. Change what you say and it will change your life. Amen? Amen. Satan doesn't want um he he doesn't want us to say what God say. That's why he stopped us from getting in the word. That's why he stopped us from trying to get to church. That's why he tried to limit our time. That's why he tried to make us so busy every day and you know and make us to suffer or to argue or to worry because he know if we get that word on the inside of us, our life is about to change. He knows that God gave us the authority. The Bible says he was kicked out of heaven because he was trying to exalt himself above God. But God said, when I'm giving man authority, God says, I have given my people. Look at your neighbor. The person next to you. Now, I'm not talking about TV Jakes. I'm not talking about just prophets before you. I'm talking about the people next to you. God says, I have given you my authority to say something and it manifests. So it's not somebody else that needs to say it. It's what we are saying. Connected to what God says that will make all the difference. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God gave us words. Almost a million words in that Bible for us to say what God is saying about us so we can see our life change. The Bible says that the weak say I'm strong. The Bible says that the poor say I'm rich. If you constantly confess I'm rich, money will begin to come to you. Money ideas will begin to come to you. Things to, to create something so you can get out of a poverty state. But if you say whatever you say you don't have, you won't have it. I'm trying to teach you something because that's what the enemy has been using to destroy the body of Christ. Causing us to say everything that we feel. But our life is not based on our feelings. Our life is based on our spirit. The spirit of God is what's going to live in eternity. Our feelings will go down in the ground with the flesh. But the spirit man will always exist with God. So it's important that we say what our spirit is saying and not what we feel every single day. Somebody say, feelings don't mean too much. Feelings don't mean too much. That's right. So, so if somebody come and hurt your feelings tomorrow, just say, just let it roll off your back. Them, them, that feeling, it, it will not affect me. But if they say something negative, the word, we got to pull that down. Oh, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Oh, you know how you hear people say, oh, I'm behind that devil. When somebody say something negative over you, oh, you ain't going to amount to nothing. Oh, you just a, uh, you just a, a barber, you just a, a 
um, old shade tree mechanic. Baby, God can take that shade tree mechanic uh, place and make it a multi-million dollar industry by giving you one idea to create something on a car that nobody ever saw. So you can't take words that somebody else say. You have to say what God say. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Satan works constantly to try to get you to, uh, to try to get us as God's people to turn our words in a negative direction. So it's so important that we turn those words into a positive direction. Amen? Amen. He'll fire darts of pain and sickness. You ever woke up in the morning and feeling stiff? Now you know it's cold this morning. So enjoy to be a little stiff when you first wake up. First thing the enemy want to say, we, uh, you, we start to, oh, my back hurt. And then when we say our back, you start feeling the pain in the leg. Then we start moving around slow. And next thing you know, we're running late to church. All these different things happen. Why? Because the enemy wants us to agree with feeling. When I feel it, I rebuke it. Oh, I rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm paying attention to what God is saying concerning me. I'm not going to tolerate, you know, the pain or anything that will try to block me because I have an assignment. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He'll fire darts of pain, sickness, and discouragement. Anything for us to speak words that are not faith-filled words. Anything that is not growing, that is not speaking multiplication, are words that are without faith. The Bible says without faith is impossible to please God. So when we, the more we say God's words, the more pleased God is with us. I don't know about y'all, but I want God's favor. I want His favor. This is a month of favor, and we're declaring favor. So that means if I can get all these words, these uh, 930,000 words in my mouth, and I can say them, I will have God's life. He's, he's not a man that he should lie. The Bible says God will send his word out and it will not return void. That means if I put God's word in my mouth, it will not be empty. It's going to make something happen because the word of God is truth. It's not a fact. It's not going to be proven later on to not be true. It is true. They tested it time and time again over 2,000 years ago and they still can't find a fallacy or a falsitude in it. They are trying to say Jesus didn't exist. Now, they're even finding images where he was actually wrapped in a mummy, uh, in mummy attire, and they could see his face. Why? Because people are still proving that Jesus was real, this, this Bible is not fake, it's true, and God is trying to get us to that knowledge that he's real and those words have power, and they will cause us to have everything that God wants to have. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Words have creative power. We see it in the Bible. The first chapter of the Bible, words have creative power. Just as God demonstrated when he created the heavens and the earth, he gave us that same authority. We don't have to tolerate, uh, you know, feeling bad and experiencing all these negative things. We don't have to tolerate that. God gave us authority over that. What, what we can see in the unseen realm is that a lot of times the enemy is sending people to try to stop the progress that we're making. And because why? Because what the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That means the person you're looking at next to you, that's not your enemy. Your enemy is an unseen enemy that we can't see. I can see him because I can see him in the realm of the spirit. But he is unseen. So just like you're trying to start your car one day to go to work in the morning and the car don't start. In the realm of the spirit, that's just the enemy there trying to disconnect that cable to disconnect you to cause you to be frustrated because you woke up happy. Because you woke up Filled with the Spirit of God and reading the Word. And, and so in the realms of the Spirit, all it looks like is just a roadblock. Something trying to block you. But what if you woke up in the morning and say, God is with me today. I will not fail. My day is going to work out. Everything's going to work out for my good. The Holy Spirit is bringing great things to me. God is empowering me. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to triumph. I'm going to finish on time. Every door that needs to be opened, God is going to open. What if we said that? If you say that, then the enemy cannot put a stop. Every time you try to turn around, my children are protected. Uh, my, my children are the head and not the tail. My children are excelling in school. If we say things like that, that's what we will get. But if we send them off and we don't say anything, we just send them off to school and we just get up and we just start our day. We run and we get our coffee and then we run and we get dressed for work and we say nothing, then everything that the enemy could throw our way, he will throw it. Just so you can get discouraged and when you get home at night, you just feel like you failed and you're just tired and all you can do is go to sleep. But what if you got in the, up in the morning and you start saying, I lose angels to go before me to make the crooked places straight. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. They are the head and not the tail. They are favored by man and by God. All things are working for me. What if we go out and we say those things? When we go home at night, we will feel peace. Yeah. We will feel joy. We will feel healing and restoration. We will feel revived and we'll want to get back in God's presence and we'll be excited about every day instead of discouraged, like, oh, what does the day bring? No, God wants you to be excited about every single day. He wants you to know that you have the victory every single day. And we get it from our word. If we just lay down like this, everything that could knock us up over the head is knocking us up over the head. It's, it's that because 
That's the plan of the enemy. He's mad. The Bible says in Revelation that when God kicked him out of heaven, he came down and had great wrath. He's angry. And the Bible says because he knows his time is short. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for a church, people who know him, people who will worship him, people who will understand him, people who will fellowship with him. He's coming back for a spotless church. And the enemy knows that, so he's trying to fill his kingdom by getting us distracted, pulling us out of church, causing us not to get in the word, not to get plugged in. That's the plan of the enemy. But God has a plan for us to be at the top, for us to have joy, for us to walk in healing, for us to be empowered, for us to change things with our mouth. Jesus, he did miracles. He's still doing miracles today. He's still a miracle worker. He didn't change. And we don't have miracles in our life it's because we quit believing for him. We have to believe for something supernatural to happen every day. Words. Words have power. You wake up and say, Holy Spirit, I just believe you're going to blow my mind today. I'm just going to wait for you to blow my mind today. Something is going to happen to blow your mind every day. But if you never say things like that, it won't happen. It won't happen. We'll just go through our day, and then at the end, we just feel so unfulfilled, feel left behind, feel like things were not. It wasn't until I started decreeing, I live in the best, drive the best, you know, wear the best, all these things. Then I started looking at things different. So instead of one of I used to, we grew up in, in the project. So I used to, the goodwill was very good for us. And so that was my mindset. Oh, if I can go get at the goodwill, that's new and that's good. But when I started decreeing the word of God over my life, I started to want more. I started, okay, I'm not buying that. I'm not going to get this at dealers. I'm not going to buy that. You know, it, it changed your perspective. Because everything your mom and daddy and grandparents did is not what God wants for you. God wants some new things for you. Our grandparents, you know, we love them. God bless them if they did. But they didn't have it all together. They living in, they were living in a different era. They didn't, I, I think about it now. My grandmother would not make it with this internet. My God, I think about it, I don't see how she, she wouldn't even, be, she wouldn't have been able to make it with all these phones that we have and all that. So I say, God, I know she had a place and a time. Because now, we can't barely make it. We try to text, call, drive, and do all this at one time and can't focus. And that is also a plan of the enemy to cause us to be restless. To have too much to do so we can't focus. If we can focus our words in this era, in the next 10 years, you will begin to see your life change starting now. Starting now, you will see it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But um, God has given us these words in this Bible to help us to get over, to give us more than enough, to refresh us when we're feeling low, to just build us whenever we're feeling like we're in a, in a low place. Amen? Amen? That's the word of God. Let's get, let's get to some of that. The Bible says in Psalms 19 and 14, Psalms 19 and 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So this is a prayer. Psalm is a prayer. And so he's praying and saying, God, let the things that I say be pleasing unto you. And that should be our prayer. Because if what we say is pleasing unto God, it is going to be his words. And when we say his words, that means that when it go and we say it, it will come back and cause something to happen for us. Amen? The Bible says in Psalm 34 and 13, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from speaking lies. Again, we're talking about the mouth. We're talking about words. God is telling us we want the blessing and we want the favor of God. Just watch what we say. Don't say everything everybody else is saying. If they're talking about this one, don't talk about this one with them because you know what? They're going to go run and tell everything that you said and forget what they said. So he says, don't tell lies. Refrain from speaking lies. Our mouth has power to create good things and bad things. That's why it's so important that we watch what we say. The Bible says in Psalm 141 and 3, set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. If this is in the Bible, God knows that we need some control over the things that we say. We have to be mindful of the things that we say. So here, the psalmist is asking God, God, guard my, guard my mouth. Let my mouth. Everybody else just say that. God, guard my mouth. <laughs> Why? Because we don't want those things to happen that we say whenever we're upset. We don't want those things. Oh, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you. Now, then you did everything end up in a divorce because we said it. Why? Nobody snatched it out of the uh, atmosphere. We have to be mindful of what we say, so when we ain't got to go in our mouth, you'll see. Next time you say something that is not nice and positive, you'll have a little, 
know how they have the angel and the demon on one side of the shoulders of the cartoon? You'll have a little angel right here. Did you pay attention to what you just said? Those words don't have life. Those words could destroy somebody. And so we want that. We want that kind of consciousness that we're careful of what we say. And then we also, God even wants us to be careful that when somebody else is saying something wrong, we don't say something wrong back. We say something right, something that will build. Amen? Amen. That's how we get the favor. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Too much talking leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Again, we're talking about the mouth. God is giving us instruction over the mouth. He's telling us to be sensible. That means be aware of what you're saying. Right now, I love to watch, um, um, what's the name of that show? Uh, I ain't watched it this week. But there is, it's a group of women. They were talking about Sister Circle. Sister Circle. <laughs> Did you watch it? <laughs> and they were talking about a lady. It was, they were finally going to have a black governor in some state. I want to say it might have been Georgia. But I, I'm not 100% sure. Or Memphis. It was Memphis. They were going to get a black governor. And the woman was doing very well politically. And she was coming to the top. And they were saying that the people went on her Twitter from like years ago. And they brought up some old racist comments that she made. And they used that to destroy her campaign. Now this woman, had a, she was a powerhouse. She was building. She was doing well. She had a lot of initiatives. She was going to bring it to the community, make a big change. But they went from some words that the woman said about a baby, uh, about how uh, uh, a white Caucasian babies have bald heads and they look like old men. So they took that and said she was racist and tried to destroy her campaign. So when the Bible tells us to use sensible words, you don't know where God is going to take you in 10 years. Right now, you see where you are, you feel like you're in a low place. In 10 years, God can raise you up to have your own everything, and people will be looking up to you. And then those same words can come back to haunt you. You might need to tell that's our president. But so words have power. We have to be careful when we say the Bible says, be sensible in your words. That means when we belong to God, we don't care what everybody else is saying and doing. We move by a different standard. You say that, okay, fine. Love and light. Who watched the broadcast the other night? That's the word, love and light. Just love and light. We just going to love you, let you say what you want to say, your words want to say me, I'm going to keep saying what God say over my life. Amen? Amen? That's Proverbs 10 and 19. Um, Proverbs 10 and 31, it says, The mouth of the godly person gives wise advice, but the tongue that devises, that the, but the tongue that deceives will be cut off. What is God saying? People who go around lying, I know we get worried, we get concerned about people who tell lies. There's a lot of people who want to destroy your character. They see you coming up or they see you go from one situation to another. They like to put labels on people. Oh, you just was with this person, now you with this one. But they don't know the hell you went through with the other person. So that's why you can't sit here and go by what everybody said. But the Bible says the tongue that deceives will be cut off. Because there are people that will go run and tell other people's business and don't even know the truth of the matter. But God says, when they go around deceiving, they will be cut off. So that tells them, I don't have to fight my battle. I'm going to let them say what they want to say. I'm going to pray that those word curses don't manifest. God promised to, to cut, that he will cut them off. So don't worry about people that go around lying and saying ugly words, saying the wrong things. The Bible says the, the tongue that deceives will be cut off. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the mouth of a godly person gives wise advice. So the more we know God, the more wisdom will flow out of our mouth. That if somebody comes to you and say, you know, they're being abused, they're in a relationship where, where the person is verbally abusing them and it's causing heaviness, mental oppression, or what if they're getting beat up? If you're godly and you're wise and somebody comes to you and say they, that, you're, that they're getting beat up and they're looking for advice, some people would just say, uh, okay, how long have you been together? And you'll say, okay, well, maybe we, we've been together about two years. Well, when did the fight start? Okay, this is a worldly person. Oh, it started, you know, about maybe a year ago. So somebody in the world, when y'all married, y'all need to try to work it out. But somebody who is biblical, a godly person will say, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve somebody hitting on you and busting you upside the head. One hit over your head can cause a concussion and you can end up dead. So right now, y'all need to try to separate wise, wise counsel. God will never put you in a situation where somebody abused you because God is not an abuser. So he, if God won't give you something less than what he is. And he died and gave us everything. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave us healing. He gave us financial freedom. He gave us peace. All that, just by, by his crucifixion, we got all that. 
So somebody who is not wise or we God will give you the wrong advice. So words have power. The Bible says the wise give godly, uh, the godly give wise advice. Hallelujah. Proverbs 12 and 14. Wise words bring many benefits. So that means you want benefits? And let me tell you, the book of Proverbs is all wisdom. And Ecclesiastes, those are all wisdom. It tells you wisdom for life, wisdom for everyday living, wisdom as a woman, wisdom in dealing with people that lie on you, wisdom in dealing with people that cheat. Proverbs and Ecclesiastes is all wisdom. The whole Bible is filled with wisdom, but those books are authored by Solomon. And the Bible says Solomon was the wealthiest man in the world, and he had the most wisdom. And wisdom and wealth is tied together. When the more wisdom you get, the more financial freedom you'll get. Amen? Amen. And it says wise words bring many benefits. It does, because wisdom is tied to wealth. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13 and 3. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. So God just said to us that if I watch what I say, my life will be protected. That's powerful. He just said if I watch what I say, my life will be protected. There's another scripture that says the power of life and of death and life lie in the tongue. It says what you say, you will have the fruit of it. If you're saying dead words, you'll get dead manifestation. If you're saying words of life, you'll get words of life. It's a revelation on words. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 and 13. I'm going to go a little further. Proverbs 15 and 4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness uh, in it breaks the spirit. So that means sometimes you can speak to someone and it will be it will build them. And sometimes you can speak to someone and it'll literally destroy them. So we need to pray that God will put people in our life in this in this era that will give us things that will build us and not destroy us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 24, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bone. If you're around somebody and then you do everything. And then husbands, too, you have to understand. Yes, that's your wife. Yes, she can cook, she can clean. But a thank you is very appreciated. A thank you. When you say thank you, it just makes them want to do more for you. We have to learn how to work the system. Amen? It says that, the Bible says, gracious words are a honeycomb. When somebody says thank you, excuse me, can I help you? How are you today? Gracious words. They, they, they make people feel comfortable. They make you feel good. Gracious words are sweet. Honeycomb is something that's sweet, okay? And so the Bible says gracious words are like a honeycomb. So we need to be filled with more gracious words. Thank you. Oh, you know, that looks nice. You can edify and building people up. Saying things like that. Sweet to the soul. And the Bible says it even brings healing to the bone. If I, say, if I sit over here and say, oh, I'm getting old. Oh, I'm just getting old. Whatever the hell we got, I'm going to feel that oldness. I'm going to feel it. But if I say, you know, that I'm young, I'm a young tenderoni and I'm just vibrant and feeling good, I will be moving like a spring chicken. We used to have a teacher at Marysville High, and she was like 90 years old, baby. She would wear them high heels and she would just walk around. She had a little shape, she would walk around. But she, she, she had, when you talk to her, she had so much life and so much energy, and she just really believed that she was young. So what you believe about yourself is what, what manifests. If you feel old, you will act old. <laughs> If you feel young, you will, you will, that's what you will have. It has power. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 27, he who restrains his words have knowledge. That means you know whenever you learn how to keep quiet. That means you know. He who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Y'all met these people who are just cool. You want to help them. Y'all met these people who are just cool. You know, these people who are just gentle. They're just like, just cool, calm, and collected. We met people like that. The Bible says a cool, that, that's a person who has understanding. You know somebody who's just not moved by anything? Nothing you say. Oh, okay, man, yeah, that's what's up. You know, like that, they, nothing moves them. A cool spirit. The Bible says that person has understanding. That means you can come at this, a person with a cool spirit, and you can say anything, they won't be moved. Oh, yeah, like that? You know, we meet people like that. I, that's, I'm thinking about back in the day, I, you would meet people like that. Now everybody want to fight. Everybody upset. Everybody uptight. Everybody jealous, angry. But if the Bible says if you have a cool spirit, you are a person of understanding. That means you're not moved by what people say. Amen? Amen. Let's say that I will not be moved, I will not be moved. by what people say. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 21. 
The tongue has the power of life and death. Those who love it will eat its fruit. So your words have fruit. They are fruits. And if you say good things, you'll have good fruit. If you say bad things, it'll be like a rotten apple. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 25 and 25. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Let's just say that. I receive, I receive good news good from a distant land. From a distant land. Amen. Amen. The Bible says like cold water to a weary soul. You have to just be and when we come off of this fast, let's just talk about it. We come off of this fast, you're ready to eat, you're ready to drink. It says just like cold water to a weary soul. You don't be just so hungry. Your, your, rig, your stomach is sapping your ribs. You're like, my God, is it 6 o'clock? And whatever time, is it 4 o'clock? Is it time to eat? The Bible, just like we get hungry like that, the Bible says that's how refreshing it is when we get good news from a distant land. And that's words. News is words. That's words. Proverbs 29 and 20. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. So somebody that speaks all the time, learn, let's learn how to be gentle and quiet and silent sometimes. When people come and tell you all their business, don't say anything. Don't say nothing. Because the Bible says somebody who is hasty, quick to speak, uh, there is more hope for a fool than that person. So we have to be mindful of what we say, how we approach things. Amen. God wants us to be filled with his goodness, with his life of favor, his life of pleasure, of joy. We say, I am who God says I am. God says I'm blessed. God says I'm royal. God says I'm, I'm too blessed to be stressed. That every curse in my way is turned around to a blessing. We have to take control of our words. Amen? If we take control of our words, we take our life back. I will not settle for not having every need met. I will not settle for not having every bill paid. I will not settle. When you put a standard, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me this morning, and he said your words are just like a conviction. Like that means that you have a standard. There's a law that you won't follow. You know how some people, some people, they call it colorism. Some people say, if you're dark-skinned, I only want a light-skinned person. I will not be with a, with a dark-skinned person. They have a standard. They're just not attracted to somebody that look a certain way. There's a standard. It's the same way if you set a standard, then nothing that come your way will be able to cause that standard to fall. You understand? So that means if I say I'm not going to settle for less, that means when less come your way, you establish that as a law in your own life. I'm not going to settle for that. You're not going to do me any kind of way. You're not going to do that to me. Set standards. Those are words. Those are guidelines that you have power. Amen? So it's a conviction. So the Holy Spirit was just showing me that when you say this is it. I will not settle for that. I will not tolerate that. Then the enemy knows he cannot come and block you by trying to give you that. So if you just say anyhow, I'll just take it anyhow, like those days when we wake up and we don't do confession, if we say them anyhow, that's what we get, an anyhow kind of day. But no, we want days that are filled with joy, with peace, with love, with happiness, with all our needs met, that we can uh, impact the lives of other people. So we have to say something different, amen? Hallelujah. As you practice your words, don't be discouraged if you miss it now and then. Because now you're going to have a consciousness of it. Whenever you say something that's negative, you're going to be reminded, oh, wait, that, that was wrong. But it's easy if you miss it, just say something, a, a better word, a more powerful word. Amen? Don't be discouraged. Repent if we say something wrong and start brand new words have power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. Let's everybody just stand to your feet. Words have power. Say it with me. Words have power. I shall have what I say. Let's say it again. Words have power. I shall have what I say. I will say good things. I will see good things. I will have the best. Say it like you mean. I don't know if you want it or not. I will have the best. God has good things in store for me. I'm filled with knowledge. I'm filled with wisdom. I'm filled with opportunity. I'm blessed and not cursed. I'm favored. I'm righteous. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand back of praise. Hallelujah. Words have power. Words mean something. You'll have what you say, the Bible says. The Bible says you'll have what you say. You gotta go get some um, name. Yeah. So uh, what we're endeavoring to do is we're going to do communion every Sunday. So those that want to partake, you know, it's a Christian church. Don't you don't have to. It's nothing special you have to do. We're gonna say a prayer. We'll say communion. The Bible says that when we do it, we do it in honor 
and remember everything Jesus did for us. Amen? Amen. So we do want to um, partake in communion. God is with us. We can never fail. Remember that your words have power. The majority of my books over there are all confessions of faith. They are all confessions of faith. It's just words that bring life, that you speak over yourself, that you can see the manifestation of God's goodness in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just bless your people today, God. Let your favor shine upon their life. Let them walk in your divine forgiveness. You are a forgiving God. 
I thank you, God, that you, and I just speak a blessing over each and every one of them. I thank you that you are going to give them more than they could ever imagine. I pray, God, that every curse over their life will be reversed into a blessing. Every negative thing will be turned into something positive. I thank you that you are favoring them in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I do want to anoint some people uh, with all today. So it's a month of favor, and I have not uh, laid hands this this um, <laughs> year yet. So I do want those that uh, want to be touched by the Lord. If God gives me a word for you, I'll give you a word. But other than that, just come and just make a line right here. 